Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's now been uh, roughly 10 months since uh, Commissioner Bulls has uh, presented uh, a communication of what we tend to call the aviation strategy uh, on a sector which uh, I think most of us would agree that is uh, uh, quite a success story. Now, my approach, uh, uh, but I believe that uh, to some extent also uh, in line with uh, what uh, uh, is the perception of uh, the shadow rapporteurs, and hereby I would like also to underline that uh, we have already been in contact uh, with colleagues. Uh, I have expressed uh, uh, my perception, my philosophy. I receive comments, and I think that they will find that uh, many of that has been uh, uh, reflected uh, already. Uh, I would like to underline that uh, we have uh, probably agreed uh, in this uh, circle of uh, the shadows uh, that uh, we do not want to be repetitive with the Commission's uh, uh, communication. We would rather like to underline the key points and also eventually deal uh, with uh, some of the blanks in uh, the uh, draft uh, uh, of the Commission. Now, uh, I would... Uh, like to say that there are several uh, key points as I see them in, uh, in the report. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we have to bear in mind that uh, uh, aviation is, uh, of course, uh, a sector in which we confront uh, numerous challenges. And there are different ways how to tackle the challenges. We can uh, build a fortress or we can, in fact, uh, build on uh, what are the competitive uh, advantages and the experience of uh, uh, the European model. So uh, the first uh, uh, point which I would like to underline is what uh, I would call uh, the European aviation model. Um, and in this context, maybe one uh, uh, emphasis, and that is uh, that uh, we should not, uh, as I've already hinted, uh, give in to different uh, pressure that is all around us, uh, uh, but we should rather uh, really make the best out of uh, what the market uh, uh, provides for and also what uh, the experience and the knowledge and the abilities uh, on our side are. Uh, so that is the uh, first uh, point I would like to underline. The second one uh, is something that I've called uh, a com uh, connectivity index. Uh, um, I believe that uh, what is crucial for the sector is uh, uh, that we see not only what uh, aviation might be about in 2020 or 30, but we need a long-term vision so that we can create a regulatory environment uh, and prepare ground for solid planning and investment. And I believe that uh, uh, the connectivity index, and for me connectivity really is the key issue in the whole report, uh, that is something that should uh, unleash uh, the potential uh, that we have in the sector. Uh, so uh, uh, Connectivity is not just about time, frequency, intensity, but of course it has to be very well uh, matched with uh, uh, the opportunities, with uh, the environmental aspects, uh, with congestions, and of course uh, many other issues. So uh, uh, while the EU is definitely the oldest and the most reliable market for aviation, uh, our industry needs, uh, I would say, uh, uh, competition, and competition will uh, surely lead also uh, uh, to new opportunities and better connectivity. Uh, the next issue which I would like to underline is security. I don't think that I need to repeat uh, uh, what we have been confronting in, uh, in the recent uh, uh, months or a couple of years. Uh, I'm afraid that the challenges here will not be uh, smaller, they will be higher, the risks will be higher, and I think that uh, we can build on uh, uh, the uh, intelligence uh, that we have on technologies, uh, but also on models that we can see all around uh, uh, the world. So uh, in this context, uh, I think that issues like uh, pre-checking, uh, etc., should be looked into. On one hand, we should improve security, but at the same time, we should not uh, uh, lead in the direction of uh, limiting the comfort of uh, our passengers. Uh, the next uh, issue which I would like again to emphasize is uh, uh, what uh, I have called uh, the European motorway of the sky. Now, you will recall uh, this uh, to have been uh, 
uh, named uh, more technically in Article 3 of Regulation 551 from 2004 as the European Upper Flight Information Region, not only technical, but I would say quite a, a heavy title, uh, which has not been implemented. And I think that uh, the Trans-European uh, Motorway of the Sky uh, should be, in, in the future, the same thing in the air as TNT is on, on the ground. So that is basically what is uh, behind it, uh, very briefly speaking. Uh, finally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure that you will have a number of uh, questions and you will maybe find one or two issues that you would have expected to, the, to be dwelt on in greater detail. But I can already tell you now that uh, uh, I'm preparing a couple of amendments of, uh, of my own. Uh, for example, uh, I would like to uh, have a greater focus on aviation agreements and also the, the Parliament's role that is going to play in, in this respect. I have not mentioned, but you will find in, uh, in uh, the report also environmental uh, implications, so which are uh, obviously in this sector uh, quite, uh, quite clear. And uh, uh, I think that we will have fresh experience uh, with uh, the conclusions uh, from ICAO, so this is another element that I will further dwell on. Uh, Chair, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, I could go further also looking at uh, uh, aviation as it is integrated with other modes of transport. We have 10T, obviously, but we've got only, uh, only uh, airports that are being as uh, the main hubs included, but I think that I would like to perceive it uh, much more in the future as integrated modes of transport uh, so that we are not on one hand uh, uh, establishing just for political reasons uh, or building a number of uh, regional unnecessary uh, airports uh, while at the same time maybe uh, uh, trains or 10T or complementary networks could be taken care of it. So these are just some of the points I would like to emphasize. I think that uh, as you have received the report on time, you have probably gone through this uh, relatively short uh, paper. I'll be happy to listen to your observations, and I will, uh, I'm looking forward to working uh, with the shadows on this uh, uh, to make it a, a good paper uh, that uh, we might uh, fill in uh, also in the future uh, deliberations and proposals with the Commission. Thank you.